this is this is my favorite way to cook. Caveman style, directly on the coals. So fast. Yeah. Today I want to introduce you to one of my favorite, not very well known cuts of beef, the flat iron steak, AK. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's got cool names too, like the oyster blade steak, or the butler steak, or top blade steak, and it, uh, look at all that marbling. And I classify this with other flat cuts, which I love. Big surface area, nice marbling here. This is a flank steak, we've got it right next to, um, just to kind of show you the difference. Again, two flat steaks, but really different. Big, bold, beefier flavors here because of where it's located from the chuck, whereas the flank is the belly region from that subprimal, the flank. I'm gonna show you my favorite way to grill the flat iron steak. Let's get into the action. As always, first thing we need to do is get this fire lit. Let's get some charcoal in that firebox, bank it all, light our fire starter, and get it put in the middle of the pile. All right, that heat's gonna rise. We're gonna get a nice flame going. Remember, charcoal is our first ingredient here. Open that draft door so we get maximum airflow, and then we're gonna agitate these coals once they're ignited and bank them into an it's angle. It's so beautiful to watch. Yeah. It's well, gorgeous. It's mesmerizing. You could, get, you could get lost in these flames. You know, uh, but when you're thinking about, and I, and I mentioned this is my favorite way to cook a flat iron steak, we're going caveman style, okay? So we're going directly on the coals. Let's disappear this flank steak. We'll get to you later on another day. Um, now we've got the flat iron, okay? And it is tapered a little bit. It's thinner here, it's thicker here. Uh, it's always cut with the grain from the chuck. So I've banked my coals at, a, at an angle, and that's how you want to do caveman style. You want the air rushing up and giving you this very hot surface so we can sear directly on it. Then we're going to move it over indirect. Um, so we can scruff this as we usually do and just. I love that trick. Yeah, just increasing surface area, increasing flavor profile, and that's beautiful. We'll do the same side. Oh, look at this, a little silver skin. So that's elastin right there that does not break down. So we'll want to use our, our knife and just kind of carve that off. Because you could you could chew on that for a country hour. Smoke can't get through that. Uh, seasoning can't get through that. So by getting rid of that elastin that doesn't break down, uh, we're, we're, we're elevating this, this cook for the end eater. All right, so uh, we're gonna start out with a little 50-50 salt and pepper. And uh, you know, if you're if you're new to the channel, I like to do this layering system where we start with salt, it'll wick moisture out, and that'll let our secondary layer, which is the kunami, it's got some uh, you know turbinado sugar in there. Again, salt and pepper, but garlic powder, some other other fun seasonings. So that's gonna be kind of our caramelization, which in a caveman scenario, cooking directly on the natural lump charcoal is gonna create amazing caramelization and oh, bark. Yeah. yeah, and so that's gonna allow it just to slide right off those that, that charcoal. We're not gonna have a bunch of, of uh, soot on our steak from it being on the charcoal. We're gonna have direct sear caramelization and the sugar, the turbinado sugar, helps that caramelization take place. So we'll let this sit for about a minute or two and let it tack up. And then we're gonna add to, well, let's come on over, let's look at the coals here. So our coal bed is nice and red under these big pieces. You wouldn't put the steak directly on these pieces. Let me show you, we'll kind of help our ramp out a little bit here. Now look at what we're working with. Yes, wow. yes, yes. I have yet to do this oh, right on the coal. so fun. It's so fun. And you, you do this either finishing a steak with a reverse sear or something like a flank or a flat iron is perfect for it. But look at that ramp we've got, nice bed of coals. Uh, perhaps we get a grill grate on there so we have somewhere to land directly after. But what we're gonna do is get a good blistering sear on the outside and then move it over to this secondary space where it can come to that medium rare gently. Now we're gonna let this sit for about a minute and then we're gonna flip. It's important not to agitate the steak at this point. We want that caramelization to occur. Right now, something might be sticking to it, right? But we, once, that, once, it, once it caramelizes and we have that crust, it lets go and we're left with the beautiful caramelization. So don't agitate it. Uh, it's in our nature to want to peek at it and, and kind of take a look. Just yeah. let, let trust the process, okay? That is a beauty. And now we're gonna dry baste with a little bit more of that tsunami. Remember, that's not a very salty seasoning, so we're not overly salting things. We're just helping build this graduating, elevated 
uh, crust where we're having multiple layers. And as you bite into that, your tongue and your brain are going to be like, wow, that's, that's the action. While that second side is searing, let's go ahead and attack this onion. Steak and onions, classic, classic uh, dish, no sauce necessary. I'm going about, what's that, Nathan, a quarter of an inch or so? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. A little salt and pepper here, onion discs. Come on back over to the grill real quick. Let's set this baby right here. Let's take a look at this other side. Wow, boom, all right? Come on. Now, that's great caramelization. Let's get a little dry based on that side as well. Da, 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 da. And now we've got kind of a hotter side over here. We're going to continue to have our coals over here. So our heat source is on the right of the grill surface. So I'm going to put that thicker spot here, uh, the thinner spot here. And we're going to put those onion discs on either side with a little bit of teriyaki sauce. And we'll get a knob of butter in there as well. Dang. There you go. Oh yeah, let's wow. get, look at how it's pulling up a little bit here. Let's move them a little closer to the flame or to the heat source. And then we still got this ramp. So I, at this point, you know, I'm gonna slice. Remember this cut is cut with the grain. Uh, I'm gonna slice the thinner part. That's a fun idea. Well, everybody's like, oh, don't slice it. All the juices are gonna, we're gonna be fine guys. Pure situational cooking, but we still got a little ways to go there, okay? I'm gonna stack this right on top and treat it like one larger roast here so this doesn't overcook and it'll come to temperature at the same time. What a great opportunity to go ahead and flip this one. Because it is thicker, look. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm treating these like one larger roast so they come to temperature at the same time. We're gonna close that dome and allow the drippings to smoke everything in here. This is where the heavy breathing starts. All right, we're watching that, our pulse is going. Uh, but situational cooking at its finest, being a part of it, working over the grill, working with the flame, interacting with the charcoal, your secret ingredient, I love it. It's been about four minutes. Oh wow, it smells unbelievable. Yes, yes. And I like how pliable this is. That tells me we're at that medium rare. And that's getting there. Okay, I think a little rest will do us good. And that's great. That'll give us a little time as well to finish up these uh, butter teriyaki onion discs. Do you just leave them just like that with the butter and the teriyaki? Yeah, so they're just sitting there with no flipping or anything. And I've done this with uh, maple miso and a knob of butter before. These little onion discs are great. You can cut them up and mix them and, and then have them as a great side or just serve them as discs with the sliced steak on top, however you like. Uh, people ask me what my favorite smoke is. I gotta be honest, we we're sitting here with that four minutes elapsed while the steak was cooking and the butter from yeah. the onion was dripping on the charcoal and we were getting this bernoisette brown butter as a, as a classical French trained mm. chef I just have my favorite smoking wood has just become butter you know uh, let's close this dome and let these onion discs finish up just a little caramelization on the bottom uh, and just like any other steak we're gonna let this rest for a couple minutes but note there's not a bunch of juices just flying around all over the place because we did that one slice during the cooking process. All right, so that is A-OK. -okay. Don't overthink it. This is, this is my favorite way to cook. You know, like I said earlier, pure situational cooking. Uh, caveman style, directly on the coals. So fast. Yeah. Throw caution to the wind, if you will, <laughs> you know. Let's take a look at our onions, our onions. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're starting to do that thing, so I'll stack them. Oh, when I say that thing, I, I'm looking for a little bit of caramelization on the outside. It's it's looking cooked, if you will. Wow. That's a beautiful onion, okay? And again, remember this steak is cut with the grain when it's fabricated. So the grain is running this way, which tells us that we can just slice straight down. So I'm just gonna go into thin strips. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Board sauce is abound, so we toss, toss, toss. That's our sauce, self-made. And then let's bring in the onions to the equation. One little slice there, toss in the teriyaki butter. Dang. Yeah, and then of course, that, yeah. go, that goes right on top. We slide this whole thing over to pick up that board sauce, and we toss again. 
that and a big bold glass of Malbecker Cabernet, you know, just, dude, like wow. steak and onions. Don't underestimate it. We don't need to reinvent the wheel every time we step to the grill. Uh, there ain't nothing wrong with that right there, that little combo. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a go. I want another piece of steak though. And I want another onion. <laughs> Doubling down, look at that. That's the, that's the bite dreams are made of. Mmm, that's awesome. Steak and onions, all right. Uh, take the ordinary to extraordinary with that caveman, a lot of fun. A uh, bit of a showstopper as well. Uh, very interactive. So folks, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the things, leave us a comment. We love reading those and responding back. Uh, and as always, from our backyard to yours, cheers and happy growing.